Good morning. It's Monday again and it's June 20th. We are on the cusp of summer and it feels like it. It's a little nicer today and yesterday, but I think the heat's coming back, but that's okay. That's what summer's for. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of two churches in Iliopolis and Niantic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries. That's a pro, that's a, a, wow, I speak for a living. Words come naturally to me. Light Life and Love Ministries is an outreach to help those who are spiritual but not religious to have tools to equip them in their, in their searches. I'm also the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. So that said, today I want to pick up where we left off last week. Last week, we were talking about adversity, and I introduced two of the four pillars for overcoming adversity. Adversity can come in many different ways. It can come emotionally, it can come professionally, it can come financially. So many different things brings adversity into our lives, and we have to get through those times. And if we have, if we see that these four pillars we will get through what's in front of us. So last week we talked about the first two and one that was making a plan, have a plan of what has to accomplish, to, has to be accomplished to see you through this period of time and this challenge in front of you and be very clear about what will mark its completion. So once you have a plan, then you're good to go. Number two was finding your people, find those who will provide support to you as you go through this time. Also find the professionals that you need to provide knowledge, information, support, whatever that is. Find the groups online and in person that will, that will empower you and support you as you go through this. Today we're going to add the last two. And the third one is to acknowledge and manage your emotions. That is probably the most difficult part of adversity is all of those emotions that come up in us when adversity is in front of us. So all of these feelings kind of feed into each other and sometimes they can zap control away from us or feel like that we're losing control. So it's important to have a strategy for dealing with emotions and there are several ways of doing this depending on your personality type and the types of activities you enjoy and your personal makeup, hopefully some of these will speak to you. Some people manage their stress and their emotions through journaling. If you like to journal, if you're a writer, this is a really good way to manage that stress and emotions. Just write about it every day. Take some time and just to write about what you're feeling in that moment. Just start putting words on the paper and don't try to censor yourself. Don't try to edit yourself. Just whatever you're feeling, let it out. That's a good practice and you'll feel a lot better afterwards. Some people like visualizations. If you like to visualize things, and this is similar to meditation, which is another form, but they're a little bit different. So a visualization is to, well, to visualize, have a clear picture of what you want, of what life is going to look like on the other side of the season of adversity and get as specific as possible. What do you see in this visual vision? What do you smell? Are you outside or do you smell fresh air? Do you smell flowers, trees? Be as specific as possible when you visualize this. What do you hear? Who's around? Who's in the vision? What kind of sounds do you hear? What do you touch? What's the texture of things? And what do you taste? But get very clear on all of these and the more detail that you can include, the better. And Keep this image handy, refer to it. It will help you when you're in a difficult spot, when you're feeling down or when you're feeling like you're losing control, then call this image up and let it reset your 
inspiration, let it reset your strength and give you a place to focus on and remind you of your why, why you're getting through this season of adversity, because this is what lies before you. Visualization is a powerful tool. Prayer and meditation. That's also an incredible way to manage your emotions and to deal with stress. If you're a prayer, get to praying and prayer can happen in so many different ways. It doesn't always happen when you're sitting with your head bowed and your hands together. Prayer can happen in a lot of different ways. If you're interested in that, reach out to me and I will help you connect with that and how, what, how that specifically works for you. If you want to do that on your own, you go to the spiritual personality quiz. I'll put that link in the comments and that'll help you to discover how it is that you connect with holy best according to your personality. Meditation is a powerful tool for managing stress. There are a lot of different ways to meditate. Some people like to just focus on their breath, on breathing in and breathing out. Some people like to have a visual that goes along with this. I believe last week I may have talked about picturing a light bulb behind your gut and when you breathe in that light bulb getting bigger and brighter and when you exhale the light coming from you out into the world. That's a great meditation. You're going to feel amazing after you do that. But there are other ways to meditate as well. What do you need in the moment? Do you need strength? Do you need calm? Do you need peace? What is it that you're looking for? Then use that as you meditate. Maybe even the words. Breathe in and breathe out and say peace or say calm or whatever it is that you need. And if you have a visual that goes along with it, even better. So meditation is a powerful way to manage stress and difficult emotions. So that's the third pillar. Find a way that works for you to manage your emotions. That doesn't mean you won't feel them. You will, but they're not going to take over, over you in a way that you feel out of control. Emotions are natural. They're information on how we are doing and how we're coping. So listen to them, acknowledge them, pay attention to them, but manage them. The fourth pillar is cultivating a good and healthy mindset, an overcoming mindset. And the way we think about ourselves and the way we think about what we can do is powerful. If you haven't used affirmations in the past, this may be a good time to start. If, for instance, your adversity is a form of financial struggle, then affirmations for you that are helpful might be um, money comes to me in expected and unexpected ways. Another one could be I am responsible when it comes to managing money. I can budget and be, you know, whatever it is. It's the power of affirmations is in the positive and in the present. When you know what you want and who you need to be, make that your affirmation and say it every day. Put it on a piece of paper where you're going to see it a lot. Record it into your phone and just play it in your car. But make sure those words are around so that they can rewire those negative stories that we keep saying about ourselves. Because the negative thoughts got us into this mess and they aren't going to get us out. So use positive affirmations to help create a different mindset. Cultivate gratitude. I can't stress this one enough. Gratitude is so powerful. When we become habitually grateful, when every day it becomes a reflex and an instinct for us to count just a few ways that we are grateful. Figure out a few things that went well in your day, even if it's a, just a crummy day. Find a couple things that went well. Find a couple things that you're grateful for. You got out of bed. You have air that you can draw into your lungs. 
find some other things to build on. Start becoming a habitual gratitude finding soul. It is powerful. Gratitude changes things. And then make sure that you're working on your perspective. I have a tendency when I have a problem or a crisis or a difficult situation that I get real tunnel vision and all I can focus on is that problem in front of me. And then when I do that, it grows in proportion and that things get a little out of skew, askew. So make sure you have the proper perspective that if it is all consuming, well, then it is all consuming, but make sure that you have it in perspective. The best way to get that perspective, again, practice gratitude. Or go and volunteer somewhere. Serving others really helps us to gain perspective and to practice gratitude. So take time to think about all aspects of your life and how all of these things fit in to your life and that'll help you gain a healthy perspective. Mindset work is vital vital. When you want to overcome something that you never have before, keep in mind that your mindset and your thoughts have gotten you this far. And that's good. You've gotten this far, but it'll require a different mindset to get you through. So use the practices that are available to you. Use affirmations. Use the practice of gratitude. Take time to gain perspective and let this form a new mindset in you because you can overcome this. You can learn something new. You can be disciplined. You can do the things you need to do to overcome this. So again, just to recap, there are four pillars that, these aren't steps to do in order necessarily, but there are four areas that need attention and focus and effort that will help to see you through adversity. So again, Make a plan and set a goal. Know what marks the end point that you have come through this time and know the steps along the way that you need to do in order to get to that end point. Find your people. Find those people who are positive, who will help you in your mindset work, who will support you in this time and find the professionals you might need if you need a coach, if you need someone to I would teach you the skills that you need to learn or a medical professional or a therapist or whatever you need, find those professionals and then find your support groups online, in person, podcasts, whatever it is, find your people. Third, manage your emotions. Learn to journal, meditate, pray, whatever helps you to get through stress. And don't forget about the power of visualization. And then fourth, Cultivate an overcoming mindset. Use affirmations, get perspective, be grateful. And soon, not only will you see yourself through the season of adversity, but you will be stronger and have skills that will enable you to move through other difficulties in life as well. So I hope that's been helpful. And if you have any questions or want support along the way, send me a message. I would be happy to support you in the work that you do. Again, my name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Iliopolis and Nyanic Christian Churches. I'm the founder of Light, Life, and Love Ministries for those who are spiritual but not religious and the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. And I'm so grateful that you spend time with me each week. I don't take that for granted. So thank you for your time. And I'll see you here again next Monday. Bye for now.